Hi, so I'm here to show you how to fix your Polaroid One Step 2. Um, on the Polaroid One Step 2, there's like a strange quirk with the design of the camera where... Um, so on the One Step Plus, there's like a little like latch on the top of the camera where you can switch it from portrait to landscape mode and it's nice. Um, the weird thing is the One Step 2, which came before the Plus, um, has this feature but it also doesn't because there's no switch. There's two holes available, but only one of them has a plastic lens. So, and I guess over time, you know, if you use the camera, um, if you use the camera a lot or just put it in your backpack and it, it's like moving around a bunch, eventually the focus ring becomes loose and it starts to swing around and it ends up covering the shutter. So I discovered this issue when I thrifted this camera because I like tilted the camera around and I could hear something like moving uh, and I noticed that something would be swinging um, where the lens lenses and I'm like oh that's not normal. So I found a couple of resources on the internet explaining how to fix it um, but not a video tutorial um, so I just thought that, you know, since I uh, had to fix up my friend's camera, uh, it's back there, it's literally the same camera as this one, the same issue, but I fixed it up. Um, so I just decided that I should just record a video um, showing you how to fix this yourself. Um, so uh, first things first, you want to get yourself a, uh, a mini screwdriver set. So this one has multiple bit sizes that are uh, pretty small and pretty much you want to be careful and you want to be precise with what size uh, screw head you want to use because you don't want to strip the screws of the camera. Um, I don't know if they, re if they have replacement screws and uh, so you just want to make sure they have the right size. Um, this one was pretty cheap. I, I don't remember how much it was but I don't remember. I Sorry, I remember it not being too expensive. So, and plus it's always handy to have, you know, one around. So first thing you want to do is um, when I recorded the video the first time around, I took off the two bottom plates um, so that I can get to the screws that I'm going to unscrew. The thing is that becomes more of an issue because you have to deal with um, the camera or, or the mirror and you have to make sure you don't get the mirrors dirty or like the gear train. You don't want to mess with that. So yeah, so this is an easier way. So there's uh, two screws. There's one right here. You can kind of see it and one right here. You want to unscrew those two and that's going to help release this uh, plastic plate. So I'm going to take do a bit of a jump cut. Okay, so I have the inside of the camera. Um, this is the cover and this is the inside of the camera. Um, prying the plastic piece off of the camera is kind of tricky um, because it is um, it's very tight. <laughs> it's a very tight fit. Um, so just, just be very, very careful. I actually just pried it off using a flathead, um, piece and I just kind of went around the edge and just kind of pried it off it like that. Um, but just do be careful. So I actually removed what I, how I fixed it before, but you see issue, um, you have the lens part and you see that swinging around. Um, you'll probably know that the camera is broken because it's you'll see it like this and then you'll just see it like swinging around like this so you can see that this right side has uh the plastic lens and this other side doesn't it's completely blank um so you don't want your camera to be like that you want it to stay there but you see it's not staying there so now what we got to do is we just have to fill this small cavity um with something to keep this in place. Um, so I'm a big pin collector. So if you're familiar with, you know, little pin backs or little pins, uh, these are just the cheap rubber clasps that come um, with some of my pins and I have a lot to spare. So I just decided to put it in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just place these inside. It's hard for me to do this with one hand, but it's I'm just gonna place this inside this crevice and I'm going to fit it in so that it won't move anymore. So I'm going to come back. Okay, so before I put the 
cover back onto the camera. I just wanted to talk about this because this was an issue I ran into when I was fixing my friend's camera. So um, keep in mind, all of this is plastic. So you have to be careful. Again, you just don't want it to crack. You don't want to bend stuff. Um, but especially uh, on the inside, this button um, that you press on whenever you want to take a photo is very flexible. <laughs> um, so when I was taking off um, my friend's uh, camera cover, uh, I ended up, I, I'm not really sure how, I think it's maybe just the way I, I held onto the cover and everything. I ended up holding it down, and so, um, and the plastic bent in like this. So it was, it was already depressed, same. And so, um, I couldn't really take photos with it. Uh, once I put the cover back on, um, the camera was, was working fine, but it wasn't registering whenever I pressed the button. Um, so I wasn't sure if I just messed up the electronics or something, but it turns out this part has to be completely straight. So you see that it's like kind of melted on with these two points. What I ended up doing was I just took, I just broke it off and I bent the red arms so that it becomes straight again. Um, obviously it was loose, but I just put it back to where it was before and I fit the camera back onto the spot and it worked completely fine. So just be cautious with this red button and how it's positioned. If yours ends up bending out of shape, uh, just go ahead and try your best to bend it back um, to shape as much as you can so that you can actually take a photo with this camera. All right, okay. So the last step now is to screw the last screw in uh, back into the inside. One hand. Uh, but you can see I already put one screw in there. Um, that hole right there, I just have to put the other screw in. Um, and then we should be good to go. Um, but you can see now, as I tilt the camera around, sh even shake it, it's not moving at all. So that's already a good sign. So you're in good hands. So let me put in the final screw and then test it out. Okay. All right, that's a happy sound. Um, so now I'm just testing everything. The buttons are pressable. Switches are good. The lens isn't moving around as I move the camera around. So that means this project was a success. Um, so a couple of notes. Um, I recorded this video already um, and I did a whole step that is completely unnecessary um, where I removed the two bottom plates to get to these two screws. Um, that is completely unnecessary and honestly, if you do that, you are in for a bad time essentially because you have to deal with making sure the mirror is not dirty and smudgy and like the rollers will just like like flop out and then like they'll get like spread out and you have to put it all back together it's more of a hassle um for an issue that's not even related to you know uh, the original issue on hand so it's good to just follow this one and don't mess with that but if ever you need to get to the internals um this bottom plate is or you take off this one first and you take off this one last when you're putting it back on this one first and this one last right um and then it's just four four little screws one two three four um, actually funny enough i did lose a screw um, so yeah, it's very serious with these, uh, little screws, making sure that you're keeping them in a safe place. It's good to have a magnet. I, I found that that to be really handy, um, just to put all your screws all together and everything. So it, when it falls into a carpet, it's like, uh, you know, it's gone. So, um, yeah, so I used a paper, like, or sorry, um, I used a rubber clasp as my, like, filler, but honestly, you can use... Um, I'm just thinking, you could probably use, uh, paper or cardboard, um, actually on my friend's, uh, camera, I did use cardboard, I, I f f rolled it up and then I stuffed it into the crevice. It's just whatever fits into the crevice without being detrimental to the electronics. So I don't use, I didn't want to use glue because I didn't want to screw up the electronics. Um, I didn't use any super glue or whatever because I see that's kind of a funky zone. Um, so 
I just went ahead with something that's I, I know is just gonna stay there. You know, if anything ever happens, like I know how to get back into the camera and, and fix it. So um, yeah, so I, I hope that this tutorial has been helpful. Um, these One Step 2s are actually a pretty nice camera um, and I would love to see you guys be able to take it out of your closet and fix it. Um, so yeah.